You know the property that we should go do? I'm serious. Go do our, an on site visit to my apartment building. Because we're getting ready to start breaking out in there, but I've got one that, one unit's got a fire, which would be perfect to do a full gut rehab on, and then other units that they could do a rehab on, and it's in Baltimore. Okay. So we should, that would be cool. We should do that. All right, everybody understand this. Quick, down and dirty, simple analysis. He's not paralyzing himself. He's not doing all these spreadsheets. The deal came to him. He looked at it. Did he go on to the website and pull up all these comps and do all that stuff first? No. He went and looked at the property list to see what he's dealing with. Once he saw what the numbers were, he came back. Then he said, all right, I think it's going to be 70. This includes my holding costs. This is a short sale. We're going to submit our offer at 230. If it's better than that, better for us. But worst case scenario, we're looking at 100, 100K. Not a bad deal. Definitely something you want to move forward on. You back burner it. It goes through the short sale process. You're out looking at other deals. If it gets accepted, then you dive in and start doing a further, deeper level, secondary due diligence. And you start, you start here. Right, Sid? Yeah. And now the short sale gets accepted. And you start tightening up your numbers. Now you get your inspectors out there, you get your contractors out there, your plumbers out there, your HVAC guys out there, all your guys out there to tighten up your budget. You start going to the city, finding out if you need permits or the county. What do you need to now get this property done? So you have all that done before you go to closing because you walk out of closing at 12 o'clock in the afternoon, you better be heading over to the property and there better be a dumpster sitting there for demo to begin day one. Yes. Uh, you said the MAL was 230, but suppose the bank says uh, we want 250 and nothing less. Now your your profit is 80,000. Is it still worth doing? To me, yes. To me, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, you know. Now, if they come back and say, well, we only take 300,000, then that really changes now the picture. Tight. So now you're getting tight with it. Right. Right. Then it becomes a judgment call at that time. As a new investor, no. An experienced investor, he might be able to pull it off, but as an experienced investor, he probably would walk away because it's not emotion. Not uh, some, some will, so what's, you know, who's next? In real estate, either, either you make money, you break even, or you lose money. <laughs> that's it. But that's life. That's it. <laughs> so. All right, so that's how we, now, on a multi-unit, I essentially do the same type of a thing. However, what I'm looking for is NOI, net operating income. Why? Because there's multiple units, so I want to know what the net operating income is, what that property produces. So I'm looking at the gross that it brings in. I'm looking at the um, expenses. And I'm also looking at deferred maintenance. And that will give me my NOI, which is net operating income. And then I subtract off of that debt service, which is also a fancy name and commercial for your mortgage. And, and you said, you when you say deferred maintenance, deferred. Deferred maintenance is when you put maintenance off. That's when a seller puts off doing maintenance on, on a property. They don't get the roofs done. You see the building is in, in disrepair. <coughs> so you know you've got deferred maintenance issues. It's a negotiating point, but these are this, you know, it's it's very similar. I'm looking for the same types of things. What kind of money do I got to put into it? I go look at it. Although I will tell you, I don't go look at a commercial property until I've done t total financial due diligence. It's not worth it because sometimes you're flying into other states to go do it. So I won't even go look at it until I get what's called a property package. Property package is a complete detailed level of information that comes from the seller or the realtor or the agent detailing out the property and everything about it. What's that report called? Property package. It's actually not a report, it's just called a property package. So similar. And again, I, you know, like Sid does, I do lots and lots of coaching and um, information.
information on, on multi-unit, but it's just way too much to, um, to go into right now. So after you get all this done, and in today's market, you submit the short sale, what time frame do you give yourself to wait for that short sale to get approved? Well, I have a, um, I use two different lawyers to, to do my negotiations. So I'll send it to, to the a lawyer to um, handle all the paperwork and deal with the bank and all that. So in DC, it could be three months, uh, it could be six months. Question, why do you use an attorney to negotiate your short sales? Why don't you do them yourself? Or have one of the agents in the office negotiate them? Oh, well, just because of time, um, as well as the legality, I want to try to keep arm's length distance from that transaction, let the, let the lawyers handle it. And what typically is the fee for an attorney to negotiate a short It could be $1,500. Could be. Now, some attorneys will get paid from the banks. So if they get paid from the banks, then they may not charge you a fee. Now, yeah. if you're an agent on the deal, then, and you're doing a short sale like this, you could, as an agent, could get paid on that transaction <coughs> a commission as well. Is that attorney fee outside of your holding cost, or is it included? No, that's outside. That's outside. Yeah, that's because this is a short sale, so you have to pay that. So with short sale, it's a lot of phone calls, it's a lot of follow-up, it's a lot of paperwork, um, it's a lot of legal issues with it. And I'd rather stay away from that and let the attorneys handle that. That's what they do. And usually, Lynn, that's put on the HUD-1, you know, at the end. so at, at, at the end. Yeah. So, you know, is it worth it to pay someone $1,500 and you walk away with Ninety-eight thousand five hundred, <laughs> you know, as opposed to a hundred thousand. Because I really use my time to go do other deals. Right. So that can come on the back end. Right. I did short sales for twelve years. I did upwards of a hundred to one hundred fifty a year. I negotiated them um, in the heyday, way before short sales even became a buzzword. And I can tell you, all you do all day is sit on the phone. Yeah. All day. All day. And sometimes for forty-five minutes to an hour and a half on hold. And then you end up getting transferred or disconnected to deal with the negotiation departments and the asset managers. And it's just it fifteen hundred dollars is cheap to have an attorney do it. In that package, it could be like fifty pages with a table of contents. Every bit, yeah. yeah the files end up getting to be about and but they see they were easy back in the day before they became the buzzword. We were getting them done in, in sixty days, ninety days. Um, Short sales were really created originally for uh, people coming back from war, people dealing with uh, financial hardships, and um, you know then they became the, the powerful buzzword that they were because of the financial fallout. And now it's just simply you know an everyday you know another part of our language you know to get a short sale done. So um, they do take time depending on the state. Uh, and depending on what type of state it is. so And also the bank, if it's a small bank versus like a Wells Fargo Bank of America, yeah. so they could take uh, more time if it's a smaller bank versus a larger bank. Not worth it. It's just not worth it. So in the meantime, while that's sitting there, you know, cultivating and per not cultivating, yeah. percolating, yeah. he's out there finding other deals, not sitting there. You should have like home. four or five of these going on in the pipeline. So go so, build a pipeline. It's also not a bad idea to have an agent who works strictly with. Yeah, exactly. Short now let me ask you a question. Let's say he gets this tied up and he, in the meantime, has found another property and he's rehabbing it. What could be an exit strategy? Would you walk away from this once the short sale gets approved? You're now working on another property. The bank calls and says it's approved. You need to close in 30 days. What would you do with this property at that point? If I was tied up on something else. If you were tied up on something else. I'd try to wholesale. Thank you. You tie it up and then you flip it. You assign the contract or you wholesale it out to someone else. So he's not going to make a hundred on it. He may make twenty thousand on it, but he made twenty thousand dollars to go look at it to tie it up. Didn't do any negotiations on it, and he's making money on another deal. Are banks boosting it up on the ability to transfer those over to a short sale? Because that seasoning and all the other stuff that goes along with those short sales. You meaning to assign it? To yeah. On the back end, to wholesale, yeah. It depends if you if you have it in a in the company's name. Let's see, put it in an LLC. Uh -huh. You don't know, always sell that LLC to the to the new buyer. You okay. just assign the LLC. Oh, you do it in LLC. Mm -hmm. Okay, all right. Never ever do a property in your personal name. Or you, or, or your primary company name. You should always make an LLC for it. For that property. Okay. All right. 
price to make an LLC for each property you're working on? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yes. You should have to register with the state. How long does that take? 30 days? Take a day. Just, but, but if you're doing it in Baltimore, just, just go down the Well, if you're doing it in Maryland, you can go right up to Baltimore. I um, I have five LLCs in, in Maryland alone. And at, I can tell you, though, it's expensive if you think about it because it's $300 per year per LLC. So, um, in fact, I was just up there Tuesday writing a lot of checks. So, you different investors do things differently. You have some investors who have one mothership of an LLC and they put everything under there. But I can tell you, if you get sued and the bigger you get, the more you acquire, it's not if you're going to get sued, it's when. Okay, you're going to get sued. Okay, it could be over something stupid, but you're going to get sued. Do you want an attorney to open up your LLC and see that there's 50 properties under that LLC, or do you want them to see that one LLC, open it up, and there's only one asset in there that they can attach? That's why it's a limited liability corporation. To me, it's an insurance policy. I'd, I'd gladly pay 300 bucks a year per, per LLC. That's a right But you shut them down after the second one. Create a new one every Depends on, on the exit strategy. Yeah. My multi units, no. I mean, you can put a contract in, I mean, you can put your company's name on a contract and send it in, but it's going to be difficult, maybe difficult to get financing for your company to buy that. So you're going to have to personally guarantee it. Right? No, there are lenders out there. I know of a guy named Jonathan who does investor loans all day, every day in the name of LLCs. Up to but 20. You, but you personally are guaranteeing in, in, its, in the sense that it's your credit. You it's personally guarantee everything to Exactly. Yeah. So you're taking, all you're saying is you're taking title, you're putting the title in the name of the no, LLC. No, title is in the name title of the thing. LLC. The mortgage can be in the name of the LLC, but okay. you're signing on the bottom line personally guaranteeing right. it. So, so you're saying you're creating an LLC for every property you're doing? Absolutely. Now some people will take one LLC and put like two or three properties. Or, you know, the, the rule of thumb is, is try to do one for each property. It's easier that way for your accounting purposes. At the end of the year when you're doing your P&Ls and your taxes, it's easier, it's faster. There's no commingling going on. How so like SIT will go spend $150. Um, it's $50 to get an LLC. I'm sorry, it's, uh, what is it? No, you, to expedite it, 50. I think it's like $150. Um, to go up to Baltimore on the 8th floor room, 801, 301 West Preston Street. <laughs> and you expedite, you get your articles, you get everything right then and there. And now this property is, is inside of an LLC. Okay, but there's nothing else in it. He's simply controlling it. He's the resident agent of it. When he goes to closing and he's going to wholesale it, he's going to assign the LLC, so it still goes to closing. It's not transferring from this LLC to this LLC. This LLC owns this asset right up here, and he wrapped it up, got it under contract. This buyer is going to come in and close under the name of this LLC. So I guess the LLC has to show a certain amount of financial credibility no. because the reason I ask that is because from my ex brief experience, that was an LLC that was formed just for a property. And then the bank came back and wanted to know more about the LLC because they put the address of the property as the name of the LLC, which brought up red flags. Which is what you should do. And then the bank wanted to know more about the LLC, the integrity of it, blah, 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 and the people walked away from it. So I'm just saying how much credibility and longevity does your LLC have to have in order to pass the scrutiny of a bank? It doesn't. It doesn't. Well, some of the banks, like Bank of America, you can't, you can't, Fargo, yeah, can't do it. They have gotten a lot stricter with that. Now, if you have an LLC that's aged, it's already like a year old, or whatever, <coughs> and you have the, the articles of corporation, they'll look at that a lot more favorably. But if you just set it up yesterday mm -hmm. and you did this, then yeah, there's going to be some red flags, that are, and they're going to look into it a little bit more. But if you're not doing anything wrong, you're providing them the right information, everything should be okay. Right. But in addition to that, the bigger banks, the national banks, Wells Fargo, Bank of America, all those big boys, normally will not let you close in the name of an LLC. Mm -hmm. The most favorable lenders to work with are small, smaller, local, community-type banks. And I can tell you, if I found out that this property right here 
the short sale was going to go through Bank of America, I would walk away from it in a heartbeat because I can't stand them because they are the most horrible bank you could ever work with. And I'm on camera. They are the most horrible bank you could ever work with in regards to a short sale. I had one take 24 months to get done. Because yeah, I think regular banks are going to look at an LLC purchase as a commercial loan, yeah. and you're in a different ballgame. Well, no, a commercial loan is five units or more. Right, but they're going to look at it as not a res not a conventional uh, individual. Right, it's not going to be a conventional loan. You know what I mean? So you don't want to go to a Fannie Mae right. lender. But guys, the, these are all property specific questions that you have to figure out as part of your due diligence. And if you find out that the bank will not allow you to take a title in the LLC, well, what's what's your plan B? You always have to have a plan B. What's your backup? Do you walk away or do you get creative and try to figure out what can you do? Not that I can't do it, what can I do? And you should write that down. It's not, I can't do this. You need to say and have that paradigm shift in your mind, what can I do to make this happen? And then seek it out. Is it common to push it in your name and then transfer title to the LLC? If you have to, you have to. You know what I mean? I am all about doing whatever I have to do to get the deal done. And I'm sure Sid is too. If he has to put that property in his name to close it and then pay another $1,800, $2,000 in transfer taxes to transfer it over to the LLC, do you think he's going to do it to make hundred grand? Yes. Yeah. But because he put it in his name originally, they still can go after him if something goes wrong because he signed the bottom line, even though it was transferred over to another company. What's the difference? You mean when you first originally buy it? Right. You brought it in your name, so the right. loan is in your name, but the title was transferred to the LLC, but you are, how does this I work? understand what you're saying. Right. When you go to settlement and you sign on the dotted line, okay, and this HUD-1 and the deed and everything is uh, recorded, it's done. Then as, as a citizen, you have the right of free speech and everything else to go transfer that property into whatever entity you want to transfer it into after settlement. But you signed the loan paper. Doesn't Remember matter. you said don't put properties in your name. How do you get out of that? You don't. The, the mortgage is still going to be in mm -hmm. his name if he got a mortgage, but as an investor, he's, he's probably, probably not going to be getting, getting a mortgage. Yeah. As an investor, he's probably coming in with private money or cash, so it doesn't matter. A, a homeowner coming in and buying the home can uh, is probably going to be getting a mortgage. But for example, my husband and I bought our home. We weren't married at the time. I wasn't going on the mortgage because we weren't married. I went on title, okay, and after we after we moved into the property, I didn't want the property in our name. So we created a, a revocable trust. And we put the property into a trust. Became an issue when we needed to refinance. Okay? I refinanced the house and I had to pay transfer taxes to pull the house out of the trust, refinance, and then put it back into the trust. But that's asset protection and it's just simply the cost of doing business. These are all costs of doing business. Yes. yes. What do you think the cost? I should say, and I understand the concept of buying the LLC, but they, the banks usually want you to buy the LLC before you before they agree to your price. So if they come back and they say we want three hundred thousand, and you say I'm out, you're stuck with that LLC. How do you handle that? Close it down. Close it down. Well, I mean, you've already paid the cost. So cost buying. of doing business. Yeah. Close it down. <laughs> Or keep it for another property. Or, or you just, it, now it's just a shell. It's yeah, just so an empty shell. shell. So you just keep it for the next property. It yeah. gets more seasoned, so it'll be better. It yeah. takes two years to season. Okay. Honestly. All it right, takes I two see. years. You can buy seasoned LLCs. Mm -hmm. um, two years is the minimum, but you better have a 750 or better credit score personally in order to get business lines of credit. Anything over five years is considered a very, very seasoned LLC. Um, but it, that is something that cannot happen overnight. It takes time to build business credit. It takes time. And there, are, I don't know of any bank right now that will let you close in the name of a company without a personal guarantee. Yeah, they have to. They want skin in the game now. So. Which is true? Yeah. All right. Any any more questions on the quick down and dirty analysis? Yeah, I have to do that one. Um, if you're looking at a, a property in the same area, okay, 
right now in the room is that there are a really quick and dirty square footage of something that just, you're looking at three properties, you know, just to give you a real rough. Brian. Such and such by the square foot. Can you come here, like please? Yeah. I'm going to put you on the spot. Okay. Brian's a contractor also. Yeah. Um, can you give me a down and dirty per square foot for, I'm going to do a couple areas. You guys want to write this down. Okay. Let's do Baltimore. Um, yeah, literally, down and dirty rehab per square foot of a first time home buyer neighborhood, neighborhood renovation. Uh, in, in Baltimore, it's Baltimore. Like a little bit cheaper, labor a little bit cheaper than Baltimore. I say like forty-five to fifty-five dollars a square foot. Okay, so Baltimore, you're looking at forty-five to fifty a square foot. Take us to Prince George's County. To Prince George's County, probably like around fifty to fifty-five dollars a square foot. It depends on the area. Yeah, it depends. Yeah. 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 Okay, let's, let's say it's Fort Washington. It depends on what part of Fort Washington. Let's say it's Tantai and Potomac. Mm -hmm. Let's say like sixty-five to seventy dollars a square foot. A regular like a uh, uh, Capitol Heights, Sea Pleasant. Probably like around five or ten dollars more square foot than like uh, Baltimore. So fifty-five to seventy-five Prince George's County. Yeah. All right, you ready? Yeah. Montgomery County. No, uh, uh, it depends. This is it's probably, it's probably around the same amount of money as uh, PG County. It depends. Yeah. Highsville. It depends. Because yeah. Montgomery County also has C level neighborhoods or oh, A neighborhood. Yeah, but it depends on what neighborhood you're in. But I can yeah. tell you if you go into zip code 20854, which is Potomac, Maryland, yeah. and you oh, call, oh, and, and you call yeah. the oh, zip, yeah. it's like the Beverly Hills 90210. Yeah. The yeah. zip code alone yeah. triggers a contractor to up the right. price right. immediately. No, but also, um, but also the, uh, the grade of uh, uh, contract you bring with someone else. Right. Yeah, so that has to be like a real clean, club, a clean cut contract, and also do not buy any materials from Home Depot or Lowe's right. going to a different uh, supplier. Right. Yeah. Okay, what about um, Cleveland? 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 Yeah, Cleveland. Okay, what about Arlington? Arlington, Falls Church, Fairfax. Fairfax. Again, if your exit is going to be a million uh, eight hundred thousand, <coughs> your square footage cost is going to go high. Yeah. If your exit is two three hundred thousand, then your square footage cost is going to be lower. So it depends on where your price points are. DC. Brian, oh, yeah, DC. DC. Again, it's going to depend, but what do yeah. you say the ballpark is? Yeah, like, I, I, I do most of my stuff like in Petworth. Um, so um, if, I'm, if I'm doing an actual draw for somebody somewhere, it's going to be anywhere from like a $80 to $80 to 120 In me. DC. Yeah, because, like the numbers are, because you can't use whole de depot stuff. Yeah. You can't. You can, but you're not going to get top dollar. You, uh, let's say, let's use Petworth, for example. Um, the top number right now is like 650. If you want a 650 uh, rehab number, that's some number that's probably right now on Bomb Street. If I want a 650 uh, uh, ARV, I, I can't use Home Depot. If I go in there for one, you can use uh, all Home Depot finishes. Um, it's going to appraise for somewhere between 475 to like 550. Right. I might lose $100,000, $70,000 because just use Home but because it's using Home Depot cabinets and Home Depot hardwood floors and Tiles. Yeah, it's a different grade. You have a, you have a Morris tile in different places. You can like a higher finish. And, and most buyers know. Right. And Brian brings up a good point. Do you think that I do high end rehabs on my apartments that I run out? No. No. So if your exit, remember what they say, right? Always begin with the end in mind. You need to know that. If you intend to hold this property as a rental, do you think the rehab is going to be 70? No. 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 What do you think it could be? <coughs> Probably half. Mm -hmm. um, like one more thing, like in, uh, over Northwest, everybody is in the, that double pane windows, true paint. True paint. <laughs> 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 yeah, so. And that's <laughs> why, again, remember I said you need to go around the neighborhood and see what everybody else is doing. Because if you if you didn't know, and I didn't know that, if you didn't know that in Upper Northwest they're putting in triple panes and you go in and you put in double pane and then you can't sell, right. what are you going to do? Right. Yeah. I've gotten this one lately. I've gotten two in uh, uh, Clark 17th Street, Columbia Road area. Yeah. Hurricane glass. Yeah. For the front yeah. door and the back door. It's like and sound. The basement. Now that to me just sounds like people have too much money. You know what they you know what they do? They don't want to put security bars on. So they get the same glass like you almost look like you wow. open a bank. And also they put like uh, infrared uh, lights, um, yeah. Yeah. not infrared yeah. lights, these lights, these other type of lights you put in the actual air conditioning that kills like the bacteria. Mm -hmm. And that system, it costs like an addition to a thousand to two thousand dollars. I mean ultraviolet. Ultraviolet. Yeah, lights yeah, in the, the actual uh, HVAC system. Mm -hmm.
So <laughs> when you're talking about these numbers, are you like, yeah. what what is the level of rehab that you're talking? About? Very high end. High end. No, I mean, well, me, me personally, I, 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 like one, I have I have one finish that's different material. Well, that, that's my small small velocity. Uh, one finish different material. Even right, with open, same finish. Like, is, yeah. is that the, like, the level of rehab you're talking about? Oh no, it could just be simple cosmetic. Yeah. It could just be a very simple cosmetic bathroom, kitchen, carpet, paint, flooring. Okay. Right. I, I guess well, I asked because, you know, give you just a simple the math I'm doing. You got 1,800 square foot house and you say $100, you know, uh, per square foot. Oh. And then, so you're talking $200,000 for the rehab cost. So I'm just trying to. That would be a total. That's total. That's total. Yeah. 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 That's total. And then, uh, one thing that you brought up that was really good, if you could get into some of the houses that are listed and actually see, yes. or go online and you look, and you start seeing when they're, 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 they're um, finishes. The, the finishes, it's like six inch crown, I mean 12 inch crown molding, yeah. and mm -hmm. chair And, here, and here's the other thing that, that you should consider doing, um, is going into some of the new homes that are being constructed and built. Mm -hmm. Go into the model homes and look at the finishes. You don't have to put in every one of those finishes, but if you see three, three tier crown molding in a master, and you can put that one element in your house to separate it from everybody else's, is it worth it? it? Yeah. So what is your signature style? There, there's a rehabber in Baltimore named Craig Fuhr. He does the one of the most beautiful products that I've ever seen up in Baltimore, truly. I, I never saw your product. Um, he has a signature in the bathrooms. He, he literally doubles the master bathrooms. But he has this signature he does with the tile work in the, in the showers, and it's extraordinary. And he, he puts a lot into the rehab, and these houses are only selling for 180 to 220, and he's dropping 75 to 80 into these houses, but he's getting them dirt cheap, and but they sell within days. Yeah. But he's got a signature. Do you have a signature that you do? No, everything's different. And see, our signature. We we have a lot of mobile home communities. Our signature in our mobile homes is we finish out every one of the windows to look like an actual home. So all the homes have full trim all the way around and because windows are subject to water and water does not do well with mobile homes period so you know there's little things in each one of the niches in real estate <coughs> that you can do to separate yourself so go to some of the model homes and see what they're doing yeah. you know what 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 are they you know what are they using um are they using the, the freezer down fridge up or the double door i mean little things like that oh, yeah. you know and um yeah, look at your competition yeah, drive into the neighborhood and you see that there's no houses for sale, but you want to see what some other houses look like. You see a neighbor outside. Don't think for one minute that I won't go up and say, hey, we're thinking about buying a property in this area. I'm trying to get a sense of what, what the houses look for. Can you mm -hmm. can I see your house? The, oh, my God, come right on in. And then you say, you know what, do you, do you know who lived here? Oh, yeah, they... They relocated, they were in the military, they PCS'd out to Florida, or down to Florida, and they, their kids were in this school, and they did this, and the husband yeah. does this, and now guess what? You've got more fuel for your, for your, for your knowledge. That's how it happens. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid. Well, the other thing, too, these first-time home buyers are looking at those new homes, right? And most of them have come out of fairly decent apartments, and boy, they expect, mm -hmm. they don't start out like my parents. They start out with nice things. Yeah. All right, do you want to take a seat and oh, yeah. relax, or do you want to stay up here and go through this with me? Sure, sure. Let's take two minutes. Sammy, that's my comment about it. <laughs> on, yes. on the, on the rental homes. We did uh, this many years ago, so got two properties there for you. And my wife and my standard is do not make it look like a rental home. And that, that's not saying my rental, home, my rental home, I'm going to show you some pictures. Yeah, my rental I mean, homes are staged. Yeah, but that doesn't mean that, you know, I'm going to put in, you know, what this crown bowl and everything else. But, I'm, but my own is on my property manager is when I come to visit you, which is an office, I expect it to be in good shape. Clean, safe, Don't make it look like a rental house. I got 50,000 soldiers down there for good. But, and I can tell you, after 28 years now, the vacancy on those two properties has been less than a year, 28 years. 
We stage all of our rental properties, at least one. Um, we do more work initially up front than we do it right because it defers your maintenance on the back end. Uh, we always put in new um, electrical outlets. We check all the plumbing and make sure that every uh, water supply has a shutoff valve on it. Um, we put new supply valves on the water.